before I started talking. Okay, well, I was exhausted because we were in the desert, right? And they had me just doing all sorts of antics in the desert, and it was hot. And then I said, I need to go to sleep because I gotta get up the next day and, you know, whatever, do the video. So, okay, themselves. I understand that. Let's, let's get you to the hospital. So, you collapsed. You're now taken to the hospital. There were rumors that you tried to mm -hmm. Let's set that straight. That really upset me. And the reason that that upset me, well, first of all, having to talk about all this, like just as a human being, is difficult. Like, I mean, I understand the responsibility as a celebrity to talk about it because people are fascinated by, mm -hmm. by things. But just in general, it's not the easiest thing to just like talk about your life or whatever. But that, the side um, rumor really upset me because I would never do that. I'm too spiritual of a person. I mean, it is not my place to say when I leave this world, that's up to God. And so when people said that, I was just concerned that my fans, like maybe a 13-year-old fan who tries to emulate me or things that I do, might try to, you know, duplicate, you yeah. know, that behavior. Because that did not happen. That Even the ambulance happen. driver who picked you up said that that did not yeah, happen. Yeah, I was on my pager. Basically, I went to the hospital because I was like, maybe these people who are trying to work me like a machine will look at me like a human being and realize this is serious. This is not me being a diva. I don't get no rest of the hospital. <laughs> what so, happened with the website? What differently this time around to say I'm not doing what I did before and, and learn from you know working too hard definitely I mean at a certain point it's like okay you know you have to look at what what's gone on and say I worked myself too hard I have to really figure out how not to do that because I'm a human being like everybody else it's cool because it's a learning process everything happens for a reason in life so it's all about learning now you Going on the world tour, what will you miss about home, home being here in New York? You know, New York is kind of like its own little, you know, it's sort of an addiction in a way, you know, being here. But, um, and I've grown up here, so I'm used to it. But um, I, I kind of like love traveling anyway. It's like I don't like to stay in one place too long. And you can't take your dogs with you, I think, is that right? I know, <laughs> that's the only problem. In America, I can. Now, you look stunning. You've always looked stunning. <laughs> Everyone has an image, and you've been written up in the, the papers. You're this diva, you're, you make demands, you have an entourage. You've turned up with three people here today. You know, sometimes there is a big entourage, but I don't think that makes me any more special than anybody else or any more difficult than anybody else. <laughs> Me and my 
girls on the floor like what? It's like that show, that show, like that, I like that show. A few different favorite songs on this record. Um, I love Shake It Off with Jermaine Dupri. Um, I love uh, Say Something with, that I did with the Neptunes with Snoop. Um, Fly Like a Bird is one of my favorites. I love a song called Mine Again that I did with James Poison. There's a lot of different moods, so it's really hard to pick one. And also We Belong Together is the second single, and that's really, really a favorite. I was just in the car with somebody on the way here, and they, they made me play it like four times in a row. Every time we get in the car, she's like, can we play that one again? People can't put out a record and do like what Music Box did, like 35 million, like that doesn't really happen anymore because of downloading and stuff, no matter who it is. So I'm not in competition with myself from the past. I'm just trying to make the best records I can make. And that's what I feel this is. This is my best record in a really long time. I'm excited about getting ready to tour. Um, I have to figure it out. Be too late. So the father fed you me cause I'll be on my way. Oh. because the emancipation of Mimi, my new album has so many songs that are really, I made them for live singing. I made them to do, you know, to perform live, but then I have my, my songs that people, you know, have heard over the years that I want to do too. But I feel like as soon as the fans really hear these records, they're gonna want to hear these songs live. So I gotta figure out my set list. I never You can't just be like, you know, oh, somebody wrote me off. I'm sorry, I thought I had 15 number one songs before that and sold 150 million records. Thank you, God. But I'm saying, you don't write somebody off who's already achieved stuff of that magnitude. But the great thing is, if they did, then now they can say, okay, well, we wrote her off. Maybe, you know, we were wrong. When people said, don't you want to call this album? The vindication of Mariah Carey, you know, the and I was like, no, the emancipation of Mimi really means this is a personal record. This is like the freedom of the, the person, the artist inside of me, you know, who loves making music and loves writing songs and singing. So it's like, you know, and has a personality, by the way, and I'm allowed to have one. <laughs> right. So, you know, for a lot of years I wasn't and people got a little bit freaked out, like, why does she have a personality all of a sudden? Why is she cracking jokes? Like it's jokes, it's not that deep, this is the music business. Randy made a comment uh, about you being one of the few people that not only has the voice, but also brings the songwriting to it. That's to me, songwriting has been such a gift because you can release anything you're feeling. Like some of the saddest songs that, that I've ever written have been really healing for other people who've mm -hmm. written me you note know, like letters and said like thank you for writing this song right. like you helped me get through one of the worst times of my life and even if, if it's a song that was never a hit never released never whatever you know the fact that it, it touched that person to that degree you know means that there's a reason I wrote it there's a reason I went through what I went through to write that song in order to help another person get through something else Well, we're just really excited because a lot of big things going on with the single in America, and this could be a really exceptionally great day for me because of the 
numbers that I heard about the downloads and the, all yeah. the stuff that's just like, thank you, to, thank God and thank the fans. Touch My Body is a great track of a great album called E equals MC squared. Yes. Have you always been a physics fan? Always, ever since I failed remedial math. <laughs> <laughs> I literally dropped out of math like in seventh grade. I couldn't handle it. Yeah. I just, and it's crazy because my father worked on he was a brain box. A bunch of the, yeah, he was so mathematical that mm. I'm like, I didn't get that particular gene. I don't know yeah, why. Me and you both. <laughs> we, we, uh, we took the liberty of trying to work out what equals MC squared might mean in Mariah Carey's world. And we thought mm -hmm. it means entertainment equals Mariah Carey squared. Well, I thank you. That's a, that's a big compliment. I meant Emancipation, ah. because the last album being called The Emancipation of Meet Me. Yeah. Um, kind of made it make sense with the E equals MC to the second power. Delicious. It's like, you know, Emancipation yeah. Part 2 and kind of times two. It works on so many levels. Yeah, and I think it's funny because of the fact that, you know, mm. clearly uh, Einstein and I have so much in common. <laughs> Would you like to stick it to Elvis and the Beatles? Oh, come on. I mean, no matter what, they're historical I mean, figures. That would be exciting to be bigger than, you know, to get more number ones than Elvis and the Beatles. Well, I mean, the Beatles changed the world, and clearly I'm not, you know, I, I don't think that I'm contributing to history or anything. I mean, like, but in a way, I guess as a female artist, you know, accomplishing these, these types of things and, and breaking records and things like that it's uh it is a huge deal for me mm. because it hasn't been done by a female before yeah. so that's um an emancipating moment and that's something that makes me feel really proud undeniably you're up there with those with the ultimate musical legends like your beatles last week was of an imperfect angel um now there's kind of a message in this title for you isn't there um i think it's basically you know, none of us are perfect. We all aspire to the to be these kind of um, images that we see in magazines and everywhere, and they're you know it's sort of impossible to achieve. I guess what I'm what I'm trying to say with this album is like, don't worry, no one's perfect. So acting, music, you know, is it nice to do a little bit of both, or do you have a preference for one or the other, or do you feel your life moving in a different direction? I like doing both. It's really fun, and especially um, things that are not expected. You know what I mean? Because that's how I really wanted to start mm -hmm. in the business. And everybody was like, "Oh, you're Mariah Carey. You're gonna you're gonna take us out of the movie where people are gonna see you and they're gonna recognize you as a singer."